Good digestion is the cornerstone of everything health and everything gut health. Without digestion, you don't get the nutrients. Nothing will run, nothing will function. And once you start not digesting properly, you get all types of ails, first of all, showing up in the gut, but across the body. And the cornerstone of good digestion is lots and lots of digestive enzymes and all the extra stuff that supports it along the way. Okay, so we've got to make sure we get plenty of digestive enzymes. And there's ways of doing it in terms of our diet, but I am a big advocate of, digest, of digestive enzymes being supplemented. Let's start here with the digestive process, and it begins with saliva. And your saliva isn't just a, a liquid in the mouth, it's a lubricating, so it gets it all liquidy and breaks it all down. It's got amylase to start breaking down the carbohydrates, lipase, which starts to break down some of the fats, phytase, it starts to break down something called phytic acid that you get in grains and so on. And it's got another thing called lysomase, which isn't a digestive enzyme, but it's antibacterial. Now, the great thing about your saliva, and I've mentioned this in many of my uh, other presentations, your saliva should have a pH of around about seven for all this to work optimally and to keep healthy teeth, even remineralize your teeth to a degree. So you've got to make sure you get the pH right and have plenty of saliva. Now you'll produce about a litre and a half of saliva or more a day. And the things that alter it are, first of all, your senses. So as soon as you start smelling and talking about food and so on. You start to get a little bit hungry, of course, and you start smelling, and you're, you're already, you're, you're um, producing, starting to produce more saliva. When you're relaxed, you produce more saliva, and hence why I will tell you multiple times in this presentation alone, if you're stressed, you're not producing the digestive enzymes to digest the food properly. So you've got to relax and take your time. So timing is a factor here. Chewing, obviously, the more you chew, the more saliva, the more you chew, the more you break down everything into smaller particles. Therefore, it, it's much easier to digest. And then, of course, one of the other factors uh, in saliva production, and in fact, all digestive enzyme production appears to be age. The older you get, the less efficient in producing these uh, digestive enzymes. So as you age, you probably need to supplement with more digestive enzymes uh, as a general rule. And so with the saliva chewing, gets it down, and the first place it goes down to is down into the stomach. And it's going down in liquid form as uh, a, a slightly basic, so a pH of seven. Now, when it gets down to the top of the stomach, it goes through a little sphincter there, muscle ring, and it goes into the top of the stomach, which is called the fundus. And the fundus uh, is where the, all of these ingredients up here continue to work. It's not that acidic. It's got a pH of around about four, three, four, five. So it's not too acidic. And they're still working away, starting to break it down. It can sit there for a half an hour, maybe even longer, depending on the type of food you're eating. Then it goes into the pyloric part. And that's the acid. Pyloric means fire. And acid, obviously, you can see that association there. So it goes into the second part or the bottom part of the stomach. And it's already pre-digested. It's already broken down after sitting in the fungus. And when it gets in there, um, your, your stomach, um, literally the, the cells around your stomach release hydrochloric acid, which has a pH of about one. And that raises, or that, that makes it very, very acidic. Uh, it releases pepsin, which breaks down um, uh, proteins. So we've already started breaking down the fats and the uh, carbohydrates in the mouth, now we're starting to break down the proteins. And proteins are really big molecules. The hydrochloric acid, what it does with the proteins is it opens them up and increases their surface area so that the pepsin, which is an enzyme, can then start to break it down. Some lipase, some fat ones are released, and another little um, chemical in there called gastrin, which uh, is really helpful for getting everything moving. Now, if you get everything right, the hydrochloric acid right, the, all these things in the, in the mouth, you tend to get movement through the gut a lot better. So a lot of people complain of gastritis. And one of the simplest strategies is, first of all, to make sure you get it all right in the mouth first. Then we work through. And so you've got gastrin and two things that um, uh, can increase that is caffeine and alcohol. So going from there, we now move across to the top of the small intestine and the bottom of the stomach. And this is where the enzymes really come into play because your pancreas, which is a funny little uh, 
what is it shaped, fruit shaped organ, and it releases bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate, and it releases enzymes, and the enzymes in the pancreas are inactive. They're sitting there going, oh, I'm just waiting around, waiting around. Um, by the way, the pancreas does lots of other things in the body, including hormones, right? So you've got to understand it's got a lot of work to do. And when it releases these enzymes, the enzymes go into the top of the small intestine and they start breaking everything down. But they can only work when it's alkaline. And hence why they also release sodium bicarb at the same time. Now, the problem is, if you're eating over-processed foods all the time, your pancreas has to release more enzymes to digest it. And there's this theory that, that says there's this, this compensating mechanism. Your body in your stomach and so on detects the amount of protein that needs to be broken down and the amount of uh, 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 enzymes in your stomach. And it says, okay, pancreas, release more. Now, the more your pancreas has to release these enzymes, the more exhausted, tired, and run down it gets. It's overworked and, so to speak, underpaid. And as a result, you in, end up with an increased pancreas size. It's what I'd call subclinical pancreatitis. Now, the problem you have with that, if it's working every day, and the problem is we eat far too much, too big a meal, too frequently, and every single day. And as a result, we don't give our digestive system a rest and our pancreas system a rest. Hence why intermittent fasting and various forms of fasting are great for the digestive system because they actually give your gut a rest. And so then we've got these, uh, these enzymes being released in here. And oh, oh, by the way, when they feed mice uh, a raw food and they feed them cooked food, the mice with cooked food have literally a, a pancreas that's two to three times bigger. It's inflamed, it's big, it's working hard, working overtime. And so what we wanna do is make sure your pancreas doesn't have to do that and we can do it with raw food, which I'll talk about later, extra enzymes in our food, which I'll talk about later, and of course, the addition of digestive enzymes, which is what I'm talking about now. So look at the pancreas, and then that goes to the top. At the same time, your gallbladder, which is the store for your bile coming out of the liver, and your gallbladder releases bile on the top of the enzyme. Now, the great thing about bile is it also has a pH of 8 point, around about 8.2, so it's alkaline, but it's like a soap, and it acts to emulsify the fats. So this is now where the fats get broken down. And if you don't have bile, uh, or you have gallbladder issues, then you may look at getting some bile uh, salts, some ox bile supplements and so on. There are vegetarian and vegan versions of all of these things along the way too, by the way. And the bile goes in there, it breaks down the fat and it all goes down nice and healthily as we're going down. And the critical part of all this is that we get all the right digestion. If you don't get the digestion occurring up here, then it starts to ferment here. Bacteria ferment, we digest. Our digestive system releases enzymes microorganisms in the gut are little enzyme factories. And so these little enzyme factories are producing, uh, uh, breaking it down, fermenting it, but they're also producing gases, which is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, a uh, bloating condition. And uh, at this point, I'd say, please check out my videos on bloating and SIBO and the ones I have on reflux as well. It supports exactly what I'm saying here and gives you a lot more information as well on those specific areas. Uh, and while you're at it, please uh, subscribe here and share with your friends to make sure we get this information out. And so it goes through here. And then finally, it gets into the microbiome, into your large intestine, this blue part here, okay? And that's the, the, the bit that literally comes up here, across, and then down and out at the end, so to speak. And when we talk about the microbiome, that's all the microorganisms, the 100 million, 100 trillion, sorry, microorganisms in there that are primarily fermenting. And those fermenting microorganisms are breaking down the foods that aren't broken down. Now, if the proteins in particular, or the big compounds in there aren't digested in the stomach and small intestine, they go through to the large intestine and they ferment. Now that's great for most products, but it's not great for things like gluten, which I've, again, I have another video on, check that one out. And it's not great for proteins. Proteins aren't meant to be fermented much in the large intestine. They're actually meant to be digested and absorbed along the way all through the small intestine. And so the fermentation goes on of proteins, 
which shouldn't be. And as a result, you end up with all of these uh, re related issues. Um, I should point out that probiotics, that if you take probiotics, they're like little enzyme factories as well. Um, and so they help with digestion using enzymes in their way. But all the undigested food leads to inflammation, which is uh, IBS, inflammatory, uh, irritable bowel uh, syndrome, and IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. And a lot of people say, well, what can I do to fix my IBD, uh, IBS? And literally, one of the simplest strategies is digestive enzymes, because they actually help clean out the colon, the large intestine. And so what they do, what the digestive, if you don't have the right digestion occurring and you've got all this going on, the fermentation, you've got inflammation, oxidation, you end up with an increased risk of allergies, uh, food intolerances, and so on as a result of it. And then you end up with all of the other conditions linked through the digestive system and all those other conditions out there, including metabolic syndrome. You know, all of this, I haven't gone into it, but this has a big role to play in things like diabetes and blood sugar levels and hypertension as well. So check out my other videos on there. Please subscribe, share this, part three is coming.